In this lesson, we'll set up your personal cybersecurity playground using VirtualBox. The goal is to create a secure and isolated environment where you can run different operating systems. This will provide you with a safe space to test and experiment with cybersecurity commands, settings, concepts, and ideas. Throughout the course, we'll work with Kali Linux, an advanced Linux distribution specifically designed for penetration testing and security auditing. We'll also install target computers that we can safely attack. By the end, you'll have a cybersecurity playground where you can practice and gain practical proficiency in the 4.0 operations and incident response section of the CompTIA Security Plus exam. This section focuses on using the appropriate tools to assess organizational security. It all starts with VirtualBox, so let's kick things off. What exactly is VirtualBox? VirtualBox is a software that enables the creation and management of virtual machines, also known as VMs, on a host computer. VirtualBox is used by individuals, developers, and IT professionals. We can use VirtualBox at any time as it provides virtualization capabilities on various operating systems. VirtualBox can be installed and used on different platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Solaris. VirtualBox is used for various purposes, such as testing software, running multiple operating systems on a single machine, and creating isolated development environments. VirtualBox achieves virtualization by emulating hardware components and providing a virtual environment where guest operating systems can run independently of the host. The rest of this video is on how VirtualBox works. To get started, you'll need the companion guide, which you can find through the link in the show notes below. Also, if you enjoy this content, please subscribe to the channel to ensure you never miss any new videos. So with the companion guide on the left hand side here, we have some step by step instructions we can follow through. So the first step here, it says visit the official virtual box website, which we have on the right side here. So we're all set. It says click on the downloads link in the navigation menu, which we have done. And on the downloads page, it says we will see a list of available virtual box versions. Choose the appropriate version for our operating system. In my case, I'm on Mac OS, so I'm going to select Mac OS. It prompts a dialog box and by default, it's going to my downloads folder. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now for housekeeping purposes, I'm going to tick off these check marks so that way we know that they're completed. Once again, these are just ideas. These are checklists, not do list. This is just so that way you know what to do and you go ahead and check them off as you go through the process. So now here we are on the installation phase of VirtualBox. So in the installation phase, it says locate the downloaded installation file and double click on it to start the installation process. So I see it's in the menu here on my browser. I want to show in Finder. It opens up a dialog box. I see the VirtualBox installation file. I'm going to double click it to actually start that process. So now for housekeeping, I can get rid of this. I'll move this to the center of the screen and it says follow the on-screen instructions to install VirtualBox. I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to double click on VirtualBox package and it takes me to a series of dialog boxes. I'm just going to accept all these defaults. It says install. It prompts me for my password on the Mac. I go ahead and do that. And now I see the installation was successful. Click close. It asks to move it to the trash. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I want to save some space. I move the trash. It says it was unable to do that. That's okay. I'll go back here and I'm going to make sure I checked everything. I located the file. I followed the on-screen instructions. During the installation, it did ask me for admin privileges. I'm going to check that off. And it says once I'm ready, I can launch VirtualBox. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so our last set of instructions said, once we're done, we can go ahead and complete VirtualBox and launch it. I'm just going to scroll down just to make sure we have everything set up. We're going to go to step three, which is download the extension pack. So it says, go ahead and visit the official VirtualBox website, which we already have. It says, click on the downloads menu, which we already have been because that's where we last left off. And we're now looking for the extension pack. 
Now the extension pack is going to give you additional functionality in VirtualBox. For example, if you want to use the USB or you want to have audio or use your um, host operating systems webcam, you can do that with the extension pack. So I like to have that installed or at least demonstrate on how to install it. So we go ahead and it says all supported platforms and it's the same process. You click on it, it's going to kick off this dialog box. It's going to automatically put it in the file that you have configured, the folder. And in my case, it's the downloads folder. So it's going into the downloads folder and on the downloads folder, I can go ahead and take a look and show in Finder, which is where I have my file located. And I'm just going to double click the uh, file. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually start up VirtualBox for me. And it's going to say reinstall. And at that point, that's fine because I already had it installed from a previous exercise. I click agree and I may have to put the administrative privileges, which I do, my credentials. And there I have it. It's installed. Now, if I want to make sure that it's installed, I can go ahead here and look at extensions and I see that VirtualBox, the extension pack, has been installed and it is activated. So for the purpose of housekeeping, I'm going to close out VirtualBox. I'm going to close out my downloads folder and I'm just going to make sure that I followed all these steps here. So I visited the site, we went to downloads, we see we have the extension pack, all supported platforms. I downloaded it, it went into my downloads folder and I just double clicked it and it automatically set up my virtual box and I followed the on-screen instructions. Now, last but not least, I'm going to go back into virtual box and for temporarily, I'm just going to launch it. I'm going to use alt tab and I see that I have virtual box. So we're going to go ahead and select that. So after pressing alt tab and selecting virtual box, I was able to get into the virtual box manager, which is, this is what this looks like here. It says the last thing I need to do is to check for updates. I know we're at the latest version because we just downloaded it from the website, but the concept here or the idea is that we want to have the latest and greatest versions of the VirtualBox manager. So with VirtualBox selected, I can go into my menu here and in VirtualBox, I can check for updates. It may be slightly different depending on what operating system you're working on, Windows, Solaris, Linux, but for the most part, it says nothing's to update. So this is great. I did my part here on the virtual box manager. I removed that remnant VM, which was a Kali Linux VM. We're going to install our first virtual machine on Kali, which is going to be a virtual machine that's going to be sitting on virtual box. So stay tuned for that video and happy that you're here. We'll do that soon.